86, we want to know for this one, which one, which transition would result in the emission of electromagnetic radiation or light? This is going to happen when you go from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. So we need to see which of these five, which two of them, go from a higher to a lower level. So let's begin with, I think the probably one that most people will see, which is 4s to 2p. You're going from a 4s orbital to a 2p orbital. That is a decrease in energy. And so that energy is going to be released in the form of a photon, in this case, in terms of uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. And so we know five is going to work. So let's get rid of anything without five. Now, this might give you a hint, one or three, and it might be a little bit harder to see, but actually 3d to 3p is also a drop because the d orbital is more energetic than the p orbital. And so dropping from 3d to 3p would, rele would release a photon. And so we're going to get choice e for this one. 87, we want to know which of these reactions will lead to the reduction of phosphorus. So first we need to find out the oxidation number of phosphorus, and then we'll go from there. So P4O6, each of these oxygens is minus 2, so that must mean the total oxygen charge is minus 12, which means each of these phosphorus has got to be plus 3, because that's what's going to make it everything neutral. 4 times 3 is 12, add that to negative 12, neutral. Over here, each of these oxygens is minus two, so that's minus six total. This hydrogen's plus one. That leads to a phosphorus of plus five. That has been oxidized. Going from plus three to plus five is oxidation. So we can get rid of anything with one in it because that's oxidation. How about this guy? So here, each of these hydrogens is plus one, so it's plus three here which means you've got a minus three phosphorus, phosphorus going from plus three to minus three, that's a reduction. And we can actually already have seen that two, we, we knew is gonna work based on what's left, but that confirms that two is indeed a reduction. Finally, how about this guy over here? I've got minus six for my three oxygens, I've got plus three for my three hydrogens, which leaves plus three for phosphorus, and here there's no change. So there's neither any oxidation or reduction. So D is out, the only one that works is Roman numeral two, choice B. 88, which is the Bronsted acid? So Bronsted acids are the ones that donate their proton. So notice HS minus gives up its proton to become S2 minus. So HS minus is going to be one of our Bronsted acids. And going in the other direction, H2O is going to give up its proton to become OH minus. And so water would be the other Bronsted acid. We would get A, which means OH minus and S2 minus would be our Bronsted bases in this particular scenario. 89, if three moles of HCl gas and five moles of NH3 gas, each measured at 20 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure are allowed to react completely according to the equation above, what will the finer mixture contain? So this is already balanced, I think, yep. So we're gonna have three moles of this, five moles of this, what's gonna happen? Well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So three of this and three of this are gonna produce three NH4Cls, but that's it, we're out. At this point, this, is the excess. The HCl would be the limiting reactant, but we would have two moles of the NH3 left over that is unreacted because we only have three moles to react with three moles of the NH3, leaving two behind. So what will the final mixture contain? Well, it's gonna contain three moles of NH4Cl, so that gets rid of B and E. But we also know it contains two moles of NH3. So that gets rid of A, and we can get rid of D because we've got leftover of the NH3, not leftover HCl. So we would get C for 89. And finally, in 90, we're, what happens in electrolysis when we are passing 6.02 times 10 to the 23 electrons? Again, don't worry so much about the electrolysis. In this case, worry about the stoichiometry of this. This is one mole of electrons. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we want to know which of these um, which of these compounds here are we reacting uh, with uh, one mole of electrons. In other words, wh which of these elements, which of these compounds that we're going to see in these choices is going to react with one mole of electrons exactly? So for example, 22.4 liters of H2, that's one mole of H2 because at STP, you've got 22.4 liters equaling one mole. Now, one mole of H2, if you think about it, is going to have two moles of electrons involved. Let's say losing its electrons to become H pluses. 
that's going to incorporate two moles of electrons because you've got two H's. We only have one mole. That's not it. Same thing with B. You've got one mole of O2. Again, that's going to require two moles of electrons. Same thing with C. One mole of Cl2. Again, two moles of electrons are going to be involved in, let's say, reducing Cl to Cl minus. You're going to have two Cl's per mole, and so you'll need two moles of electrons. So that's out. Same thing with E. In E, copper is copper 2 plus, and so you would need two electrons to react with that to form, let's say, solid copper. And so again, that requires two. But AgNO3, Ag is plus, that can react just fine with one mole of electrons to be reduced into the silver metal. And so that could involve the passage of one mole of electrons, and so that one is 